I love that. I love the intro music. I love that. It's like it's so cyberpunky. So uh, Nine Inch Nails back in the day. It's very much uh, like I don't know, like a I've got a punch deck. You know, I've got to jack into the grid. Then like just, you know, some some eyeglass wearing guy just just tapping away at a keyboard with a power glove on her something like that anyway hey how is it going um why'd i start like that i don't know but um yeah this is a uh, maniacal books a uh, weekly podcast <clears throat> i am the uh I'm the the guys in charge of this dumpster fire uh my name is alex mack um and if you're listening thank you for clicking on me checking me out um so uh yeah what okay what what is maniacal books who are you? Why, why, why should I care? Who are you, right? So, all right, fair enough. I'll tell you who. Uh, so, well, Maniacal Books is uh, a indie publisher that publishes horror and uh, sci-fi and like fantasy. Um, that's a uh, pretty, pretty grotesque. Pretty, it's it's a hard R. You could say it's, it's stories that uh, have a hard R to them. Um, and that, uh, and I guess the, the hook for this one is a lot of the stories will have kind of like predominantly black cast or, uh, you know, people of color cast, um, <clears throat> because they are written by a, uh, person of color. That person would be me. Hi, I'm Alex Mack. Um, I am, I just started this and I wrote, um, my first book. This has already been published. It is a. Actually, I have it right here. It's a horror title called Mulch, and it's going to be obscured by the camera. And just off the back, yeah, I need, a, I need like a green screen because, oh, my God, and I'm getting the, hold on, I'm getting the trash in the back. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need a green screen because that's just terrible. That's horrible. And, um... Yeah, and I need a mic. I found out I need a mic because I like this one's okay. It's pretty good, but I mean, it sounds very airy. I'm not that. Um, I don't sound that that full, and it's not picking me up the way I want. But um, but yeah, as, I mean, as you can see, it's this this is small time indie struggle time right here. Um, and <clears throat> so yeah, it's been. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna go into the whole the whole thing, but um, it's been uh decades in the making i can honestly say um i really really honestly started just writing a uh, weird stuff crazy stuff like man i probably want to say 12 13 years old i'm um, just writing like fan fiction and um like for uh for me it was uh like i fell into comic books really heavy it, it was like x-men i i i like read a ton of X-Men like the first comic book I actually got into and I started reading and I just, just like was obsessed with it and I finally just started uh like writing up kind of like stories and stuff on my own um so that's that's when I first started just kind of writing and that that's been that's been a while ago what did I say 12 13 yeah it's been a minute it's been a minute so um I, I was like writing constantly uh and so I I Finally, in the pandemic, like when everybody, <clears throat> I feel like God made everybody just go to their own corners for a minute because, you know, we were just we just off the hook <laughs> as a species right now. Um, and so while I was just sitting there, I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to try to why not just write something and um, and just publish it, you know, just to do it kind of i mean what what the hell else I, what the hell else was i doing because I, I had gotten my contract ran out i got laid off and i was just sitting at home and i was just like eh, you know i'll just in the meantime i'll you know look for jobs um i ended up just going to the post the post office for a minute um i worked there for like two two weeks three weeks and i was like all right yeah that's enough i'm out i got a couple of checks so i'm good um and yeah and i just like from then, I was just kind of like, all right, let me just get this going. And the damn thing, see, this is, oh my God, this is just straight struggle time right now. 
all this stuff. This never happened on the other podcast. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, and um, I ended up uh, publishing this baby right here uh, called Mulch. I was going to bring this in, but I, oh my God, I lost my page, but so I have a graphic. I'll put the graphic up there. Um, but uh, yeah, for if for anybody that's listening, it's a uh, it's the official title is called Mulch, the first thrilling novella from Maniacal Books. Um, it was published in 2021. What's it February? Like February 2021. And um, it to my surprise, actually, it kind of debuted at number one on the uh, African American uh, fiction category i think um what i actually have to look at that and make sure i it to be i took a pic i took a screen grab i i, I took a screen grab of it because i'm like nobody's gonna believe me <laughs> i barely believe it i barely believe it like but yeah it um it actually debuted at number one and it stayed there for like a whole day for like a whole day like uh like my book my little book was number one on the african-american um fiction thing and yeah that was cool that was thrilling um, and, uh, so yeah, and I, and I actually, I made sure to, uh, like put, uh, like, a way more deal of effort into it than I usually do anything else just for, um, you know, cause I want I want to do this and I want to do it like, well, I mean, good, I guess that goes without saying, but I mean, like, you know, just. You know, I wanted to kind of like make it a thing because if I make it a thing and make it a whole thing, then like it's uh, hopefully it translates out to anybody else that, you know, sees that it's been kind of has like a lot of effort. It wasn't just thrown out there, you know. And so, um, yeah, I got um, I got uh, like a really good editor. I hired like a professional, like a, a truly professional editor um, to like go through the books. I didn't have like, I don't know, some somebody's my 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 boys friends cousins mama they uh, like to go to like edit the thing or whatever nothing crazy like that oh, yeah yeah i know a, i know a girl that like reads a lot so yeah she she just read it and said you know just like so yeah all right it's all right yeah it's good there you go yeah where's my 50 bucks or whatever but um yeah so um it's been it's been pretty good um now again indie publisher i have no i have no money i don't have a budget i don't have a scope i don't have um any connects or anything like that um so like it's been i mean the response the thing is nobody read it <laughs> basically the the main point is nobody read it but the people who had did end up picking it up and reading it that i've heard like a, a bunch of like positive stuff about it um like people who actually have like picked it up um and uh, even the reviews on it are, I haven't gotten completely slammed yet. Um, but the few that I have have been all right. They've been okay. They've been pretty, pretty positive to okay, okay to positive. I guess you could say. Um, was I got a bunch of three stars? Uh, actually, you know why am I talking about it? Just pull the damn thing up already. <clears throat> this is the Amazon, the Amazon page. My voice cracked. My Amazon page. Um, so yeah, uh, this is. It's, it's only got again. Not not nobody read it. Not a lot of people read it. But the the reviews that it has gotten, and also just kind of um, word of mouth too. Um, people who just kept like the paperback and uh, just didn't get the the ebook or anything like that. Um, like when they sit down to kind of read it. I guess I guess you know it's it's not terrible, you know it's not the worst garbage they ever read. But um, <clears throat> so yeah, I got um, you know the lowest is probably like three stars, and is this the weird one I didn't understand? Yeah, a decent book, quick read with a little more polish, editing, crafting. Yeah, and so that's the other thing. So yeah, this is like February 2021. This was before, so I put it out way early last year, and um. I was seeing this and I was, and there was, uh, I think another one that said, oh, yeah, see, good story, but needs polish. 
<laughs> so I was like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. And that's when I kind of went back to the drawing board a bit. And I remember it was like one in the morning or something like that. And I was just, it was just in my bed. Like, okay, how do I, I don't know anybody. I don't like, you know, I don't, who, how do I get like a good editor or whatever to look through this? And <clears throat> I just, one in the morning, it just kind of like hit me. Just like, just, okay, go to LinkedIn and you know, I have my, my company, like registered company, you know, Monaco Books. So it's just like, you know, I just go to LinkedIn, create a profile and uh, start looking for people. And so I did that and I got um, in touch with, uh, like it was, I put in an application. Honestly, I put it into, I put in the application, not thinking anything of it, right? Just thinking like, okay, it's a thing. I don't, maybe I'll get, maybe I'll get like five or something and maybe there'll be like actual um editors or whatever but bro i got about like a, over 100 i think like 120 <laughs> applications like in the next day i had to cut it off like i had to like cut it off at like because when i woke up uh and i got to work the next day i would look at it and it was like what? yo nah okay wait hold up what, what did i just do what i done done oh god what i done done um, and so, yeah, and I, and I ended up getting, um, a lot of like really, really good, highly qualified, uh, editors and stuff. And I also got like, um, somebody who was supposed to help with graphic design, but they, they ghosted me. So, I mean, whatever, but, um, but no, the thing is I found, um, a really, really good editor, uh, who is, you know, I'm going to pull her up here. I'm going to shout her out right now. Cause I'm going to go to my website. And also, um, so Monaco Books is uh, the imprint of my 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 main company, Max Books Publishing. Um, you know, you see my uh, my thing right here. But um, I'm gonna go to stop it. Please don't look at that. Don't. Yeah, no, don't. God, I hate that picture. I gotta replace that. But uh, Kate Schaefer, uh, who's the one I found on LinkedIn, um, and is like we. She she is very easy to work with. Um, she she kind of understood what I was getting at, and um, you know I I think I, I sent her a link to like a book or whatever, and um, she checked it out and said you know it's pretty good like it needs some work <laughs> like everybody else was saying, but it's it's pretty good and um, yeah man we I hit it off right there and she is and like we work well so good that I was like you know what um you gonna be my editor in chief. <laughs> Dude, are you okay with being my editor in chief? You know, because um, you don't really want to work with anybody else. So yeah, you're you're pretty good here. Um, and so yeah, and Matt, I she really helped me understand like the the worth of like a really good editor because like it's um it's your words you're writing, but she can craft it and and turn it and tone it in the way that it 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 makes. It hits harder. It makes it's more relevant, and it just makes it better. I don't know if I can put it in the words like that, um, but yeah, she is good. And um, check out uh, maxbooks.com. That's mcsbooks.com for uh, like more stuff on that because we're we're gonna we're, well the the plan is to do some some more videos and stuff like that on that end. But okay, all right. Anyway, where am I? Uh, so yeah. Uh, so uh, let let me just read a quick little er excerpt from here um you know just to see what what you know what, what i'm working with and you know what's 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 happening over here um <clears throat> so as you know if, if you're watching this hopefully you can you'll uh, check it out and uh you know pick up the book you know become a supporter that'd be that'd be rad but um all right let's see hold <clears throat> oh, now i gotta enunciate Tip of the tongue, top of the T. All right, I'm done. I'm done. All right. Okay. The silent darkness of the sweeping plains hang about Deputy Arakpo like a death shroud. Each crunch of earth beneath her boot seems to echo out to the vast blackness of the wide open night. To her, the sound rings like dinner bells for the creatures that threaten this ground. Dread bubbles up from the pit of her gut with each step. Trekking alone in the dark, she has one thought that keeps settling at the forefront of her mind, like a simmering ember of a fire that refuses to smolder and die. 
at night, a quiet forest is a dangerous forest because all the small forest critters know to stay quiet when a predator is near. But she dares not let that slow her momentum. Egged on by her sense of duty and her promise to the kids and Mrs. McClendon, she opts to not turn on the flashlight while she ex while so exposes in the endless flat darkness as she wishes not to make herself an easy target for whatever horrors lie waiting behind the distant trees. Drawing on her years of experience working the graveyard shift in Baltimore's Harlem Park neighborhoods, she pushes past the fear and focuses on the situation. Uh, retreading the path she walked just hours ago with the only family, with the family, she notices the ugly plants are mostly gone. Only a low droning of insects hover gently over the jagged stumps protruding out of the ground. Curiosity wins over her fear as she finally pulls out her flashlight. She clicks the gadget to life and sweeps a beam of light over the tobacco field. She jumps backwards in fright and almost loses grip on the flashlight. The entire field is now covered in an ocean of writhing insects. Wave after wave of flies, spiders, moths, and locusts furiously scamper and prod over the crop field. Leaning in to get a better look at what en entranced the bugs, she notices the tobacco plants are being stripped of the covering of goo. The bugs are devour devouring the alien substance with ferocity, intensity, wiping whole leaves clean in a matter of seconds. The monstrous plants are being inhaled by the swarm. Whole leaves and stems disappear at a moment's time. Okay, that's enough. All right, I'm good. So yeah, that is uh, pretty deep in the story. Actually, it's kind of towards the end of it. Um, and, most, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's a. I like to describe it as just kind of like a B horror movie from the '80s. Um, it's it's very it's it's very kind of straightforward. Uh, it's a very kind of dark, very uh, like menacing, very somber kind of story. Um, the, it's, a lot of it takes place at night, and it's uh, it's very kind of like isolated rural horror. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hopefully that piqued the interest. And um, I don't know. Hopefully I read good. I'll read so good. No more. All right. Um, so all right, here we go. So enough of that. Travel with me to a dark and isolated farm located deep in the heart of St. Mary's County, Maryland, where the only African-American farmer and his family are being tormented by some thing stalking around their property. Can they survive? Can they protect the farm that is their very livelihood? And can they do it with their sanity intact? Are you in the mood for dark, isolated, rural horror? Are books full of ghastly green goo and reanimated corpses your jam? Then check out Mulch, the eerie inaugural novella from Maniacal Books, available today on Amazon Kindle and mcsbooks.com. Now, what this podcast is actually going to be about, so it's going to be a little bit of that, a little bit of uh, publishing, a little bit of writing, uh, a little bit of novelization and stuff like that, but I am also wanted to use this to be like a, a show that uh, kind of showcases horror in pretty much every every medium. And so um, I have a lot of uh, shows and movies and stuff that I watch, and uh, so, and a lot of internet things as well. Uh, and so. Yeah, I, I want to do um, some reviews of some TV shows, some movies, um, do a little reacting, uh, you know, and uh, just have some fun with it. And, uh, you know, hopefully bring some some eyes over to uh, to my books, to my channel and, um, you know, try to like cross pollinate. Right. You got to got to coordinate. You got to coordinate. Uh, rest in peace, Spoon. But so this 
this week uh, I am going to be talking about um, evil and was it prey uh, for, uh, both from uh, Paramount Plus and Hulu respectively and also um, but first first I'm going to do um, a quick reaction here for um, a little thing on YouTube I just saw a couple of days ago actually called uh, Backrooms this is this is very fascinating um this is it's, i think it's a creepy pasta i don't it, I, it does is creepy pasta still a thing is that still a thing i honestly don't know i i don't i haven't heard that for a while but there's nothing the one thing i really love about back rooms is there's no there's nothing there's no other way to really explain that <laughs> it's like it's it's very much a creepy pasta but it's it's its own kind of thing its own entity its, its own kind of branching narrative that's just ongoing and ongoing um and and this this is something that's gonna put a lot of people to shame it's, it's completely brilliant um it's very much a, like an indie uh you know a, a, a low budget thing you know which hey respect respect props to you know i'm in the i'm, I'm in the mud right with you you know what i'm saying but um this thing is done by a 17 year old kid 17 year old kid you believe like it's so well done it's so well done it's it's hard to believe like a 17 year old kid is, is doing this like there's there's no way but um yeah so all right what is back rooms back rooms um so apparently um you can uh no clip out of reality and no clip is an old video game term um i remember that back in the 90s when i was playing my computer games and stuff like that um, so it's, it's basically like it's a cheat code you put in the game and it lets you just fly around the map and you can go through walls you can go through floors and ceilings so you can like and just like like float above the the map so you can like see like get a good uh, like view of the maps and it was always in a few games it was actually pretty cool to do that because you can see like the, the the game layout and you can see where the enemies are and what the enemies are doing like two levels below you or something like that uh which is really cool but so in in this this is like in reality you no clip from like from the world from like where we are and like so i kind of feel like, like my my chair is no clipping into i need a green screen i'm broke but yeah so it's um this thing is you know you clip out of reality and so you go into these uh back rooms which is like the staging area this like for our realm basically you you disappear from our reality and you go into like like the back room like the the unexplored or the the what's supposed to be the non-existent territory right and so um <clears throat> and it's full of like just yellow rooms and yellow walls and, and things like that um and it's it's very it's very much like isolated horror and, and they have like the found footage aspect to it too um and it's it's so well done and uh it's, it's it is pretty pretty damn genius honestly um because it's hard to believe that just one 17 year old kid is like doing all this you know it's because it's so well kind of thought out and um like they he has like like a branching narrative too so like things that happen in one video and it'll take you like three or four videos to find out oh okay so that's what that was supposed to be or whatever you know and it's just and it's something to think about like that that would be completely horrifying like you just phase into this other place and it's just like a maze of just yellow walls and stuff like that you know and yeah, like right there they got people like disappearing like think people disappearing and like this uh, another otherworldly creature or something that's lurking this as well um it's yeah it's one of the best uh horror things i've seen in a, a long time actually and i think it's this this is kind of a gem because it's it's very much independent thing it's not a hollywood thing and it's not even like i don't even know if this would translate into like a typical like horror medium kind of like that's just one of the the things that's like really great about uh you know uh youtube and uh cre what creators are doing on youtube you know it kind of subverts 
regular media, you know, into and it's this whole new thing, like, because you can't consume this in a regular way. Like a bunch of people go to a movie theater and you just like stare at the screen, uh, you know, uh, to to watch it. But because the this the way you watch this is the most the most effective way is just like I think how most people like first come in contact with this, you just watching YouTube at like one in the morning, <laughs> you know, and like in the you're you're just in a dark room, you're in your bedroom, like on your phone or on your tablet and you're just watching this and it's and like you're already like in, in this very kind of isolated zone, this isolated kind of mood and you're in the dark and then like again you're just going through these these back rooms, these back alleys and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, that's that's what it's kinda like is most effective, you know. Um so yeah, again, seventeen years old. I can't believe it. Um there there's about twelve of these videos, I believe. Um I have seen I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen uh I, I think probably about half so far. Um and he he he's still working on these, um, like as we speak, honestly. Um I think uh, the last one came out like two weeks ago. Or so, um, and so yeah, I kind of wanna, I kind of wanna, uh, you know, watch this, do a reaction to this. Um, this this fits the, the maniacal books uh, motif, kind of to a T. Yeah, this this might be the best thing on YouTube. This might be the best thing horror related on YouTube. It might it might just be. Um, that that's crazy. That's incredible. Um, yeah. So there. <clears throat> Again, that's that's the latest one they reviewed, but there's like twelve other ones, and they, they had the um the car in there, which they, there's a bunch of videos they put out there that's like really short, really short clips, and they had one of them that like there was this car just driving like a highway, and it just kind of clipped out of existence, and just kind of sitting there like, okay, what the hell was that, you know? But so and so that monster in there they actually like show that in the very first one um and yeah I, God, I hate the sound i mean i hate but i love it but man the way the sound design on that monster is just uh it's the most uh, god imagine something sounding like that and you hear his footsteps frantically like racing towards you uh, god yeah so um again kane pixels is the guy who who makes this 17 years old like I, unbelievable, man. If I okay, so I'm if I'm gonna give a review from one to five uh, for back rooms as a series at this point, because this is ongoing still. But as in this point in in September 2022, I I, I would give this a five, five out of five. Like yeah, it's just, it's not done, it's not done yet. But I, man, like. And it got me. I never, I never fall for jump scares. I never fall for jump scares. But it got me. It got me. Ah, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> but yeah, back rooms. A uh, cane pixel, seventeen years. I keep saying it. I know, but come on, man. Jeez. But, um, yeah, I love it. All right. segment of the pod um i have two reviews to knock out for for everybody here um i have my thing in upside down that's why i was uncomfortable so uh yeah i have two of them here so i have a uh, prey which i'll uh get to first and then uh i have uh evil uh this tv show on cbs so uh it's so prey uh directed by dan trachenberg uh starring Amber Mid Thunder as Naru and Dakota Beavers as Tabe. I think that's how you say that. Tabe or Taabe. Um, it's a rated R and it's available on Hulu. Um, and this is so, right off the bat. Um, this it's a genius concept, actually. It's uh, I <laughs> I honestly never thought I needed this. It's one of the things you you didn't know you needed it until it was presented to you. Um, so yeah, um, the Predator. Uh, in the 1700s and uh, 
going against Native Americans. Okay, yeah, I didn't know I wanted anything like that, but okay, yeah, let's let's go, let's do it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a really solid, uh, really solid film. Um, I'm a fan of the the Predator franchise. Um, I, the the first one, the first one with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the the best, like it's hands down the best one. Um, but uh, the the second one with uh, Danny Glover very underrated nobody talks about that and it's we like danny glover in a predator movie what but he's he's like this a uh, cop in la it takes place in la this time and i i imagine one of the taglines for that was it went from the the jungle to the concrete jungle or something stupid like that some like a bad 90s action movie tagline would have um it's really underrated though like i really i remember seeing that as a kid and i was like that's even as a kid, I'm like, that's different. <laughs> you know, that's that's new. Um, and there's been uh, a couple of them. I, you know, they had the AVP, Aliens vs. Predators, which is okay. Um, I really don't remember anything about that except uh, Sanaa Lathan is in it. That's all I really remember about that. Um, I can't remember who won, if the, the Xenomorphs or the, the Predators run. But I just, I don't know. It was an alright movie. Uh, and then there was there was one with Adrian Brody. I don't. I still haven't caught that one yet. Um, uh, from I've heard it's I. It's on on a scale of one to five, it's I. You know, this one though, this is a very solid movie. Um, I really like um, you know going. We I don't think we've had um, a native uh, a fully Native American cast in a movie quite like this. Which you you gotta respect that you gotta commend that um, it's really well thought out, um, really well done. Uh, the uh, I, I really love the 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 characters in this too. Um, the the main lady in here, uh, Amber Mid Thunder. Yeah, I I really liked her in this. Um, she really kind of held her own. Plot is she is looking to become like a hunter. Or, or like a warrior just like her like her brothers or like all the other kind of male kids in there and you know they keep they give her a bunch of grief and stuff like that because you know it's like you're, you're a girl you can't hunt with with the rest of us you know she has to she end up like trying to like prove that she can hold her own and they go on these like hunts and and things like that um to, to track it to a uh, coyote or um or a mountain lion i i think or something like that like they're going after a mountain lion or something and um <clears throat> you know she i think she ends up getting injured in the hunt and so she she goes back but but the whole time she's saying like i think she because she saw like i think she saw the ship but she was just thinking it was like a star or like a fallen star or meteor or something like that um but she kept the whole time she's saying like uh she found like these other kills and stuff and she's like look there's something else out there <laughs> you know what i mean but you know the boys are the boys being the boys are like, yeah, all right, whatever, man. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And her brother, uh, wait, what did I say his name was again? Uh, he was really, I really liked him in this too. Like, he was really good. Um, is it Dakota Beavers? Yeah, Dakota Beavers uh, played uh, Ta'abe, I think is how you say his name. He was really good in this too. Like, he really held his own. And, and he didn't play it as the, um, like, a lot of other movies, he would have been, like, the, um, just the, the, I don't know, kind of bully, like older brother or whatever, and just kind of like, you know, just, you know, push his, his little sister off just to like, you know, hang with his boys or like, you know, just to improve his, his standing with the boys in the, in the pack or whatever. But um, no, he didn't do that. He actually like really, he was really rooting for his sister, you know, in the long run, you know, but yeah, he's, 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 Part of the part of the, the the pack, part of the tribe. He's a warrior, you know. He's he's trying to earn his stripes as well, um, and which they played that to a T. But um, yeah, they really they really uh, play well off of each other. Yeah, I, I believe their their uh, relationship in this it really came off as like a kind of like a believable brother sister thing. Um, and you know when uh, when everything starts happening, you know the, the <laughs> hit the fan as they say. Um, they they work well together and uh, they they also had like some uh, French uh, colonizers I guess in this as well 
which right off the bat, you knew they were going to be, um, they, they were just going to be predator food. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they were in the movie to be killed by the predator, you know, but, um, but they ended up cap capturing uh, both of them uh, and taking them to their like camp or whatever. Um, and uh, the predator ends up tracking them down and, you know, they have a whole big thing. It was pretty, yeah, it was, it's actually, I was into it though. I was into, I wasn't expecting that much from it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's actually really good. Um, like it's, it's shot very well. Uh, the the predators is uh was uh, predator was kind of a douche in this, but it's, it's a predator. But yeah, who was and also I like the the fact that there's a whole nother like breed of predator or whatever. Or um, I guess you could say like the uh, the predators have different ethnicities now. Like he's, he's like his whole like facial structure was different, um, and and everything. Um, but I, and I guess you could say that maybe they evolved from this predator because this is back in the 1700s. Yeah, he looks he kind of looked like a, a, a uncooked like a raw turkey or something. Because <laughs> the the original one that I'm used to like on the left, that's the one I'm kind of used to seeing. But um, yeah, they had like there's a whole new like a another race of predator i guess which is really cool like they it's, it's kind of like a nice way to expand on the the predator lore without going too much into it you know because end of the day it's a predator movie we're here to we're here to see the predator like just decimate whatever it's hunting but i would like that i would honestly i would like to see like we go to the predator's home world again and but we delve into how how they became like like so technologically advanced and uh you know that their 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 rituals like like how they you know what they do when they're like um like how how did they get there like you know how who are they how did they get there you know it's not i would love to delve into that but i know it's mostly about the the kills the violence but yeah it was pretty good um the only my only thing i kind of laughed or scoffed at in the movie was she had this um uh naru had this uh this axe she like she so she tied a rope around like this this hatchet it was a hatchet really and so she tied a rope on the end of it and she like throw the hatchet and like she like tug on the rope to recoil it or whatever and that's like the biggest like i know in a movie where it's it's about a space alien uh that loves to hunt and kill <laughs> like i know i know we we in we in way out land anyway but that that even with, with that being said that was still like the most unbelievable thing in the thing like how do you so you throw the, the hatchet and you pull it and just catch it just like that like you go you're gonna cut some fingers off you, you're gonna the things are gonna smack you in the face a couple of times right I guess you could say like okay if you just train with it but she was in a crisis situation like so she's she, she had like a quick five minute montage of her like just throwing the thing in tree trunks and like re re recoiling it or whatever it's like okay whatever man jeez whatever that was dumb yeah overall it was pretty good this was more of a I just, with all these predators it's like man just, why don't you go to a planet where like there's actually competition like how you go to a planet where um you're like technologically advanced you got like cloaking you know and stuff like that like you can't, right? that's that's just how you can't respect that that's like shooting fish in a barrel <laughs> in a in a sense like come, come on man just, like how, go go to like a, a planet where they got camo and they got like uh like nuclear handguns or something like that something crazy you know where they can hold their own you know it's a it's an actual it's, you know it's an actual fight it's not just you going somewhere because I got this sense, like I just really is like, oh come on, man! You, it's the Native Americans, you know, they got bows and arrows for Christ's sake. Like, what what we doing here? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, what with that being said, it was pretty good. I really liked it. Um, it was like uh, the characters were, the characters were very believable in the setting uh, there, and I I was rooting, I was with them, I was rooting for them the whole time, even against the colonizers, even like against the French colonizers in there i was rooting against i was rooting against them like yeah man, get, yeah set them up and they set them up beautifully too um you know and um uh, yeah it was, it was a pretty good um i'm giving this a four good four out of five 
solid movie. Um, I definitely see myself watching this again from time to time, having it on in the background or something. Um, and my, you see my chair, Lauren. Yeah. Damn chair. Anyway, uh, yeah, pray. Solid flip. Thank you. Let's talk about what is pretty much my favorite uh, thing streaming right now. It's my favorite TV show or currently on TV or on the internet or however we however we say it nowadays. Um, this is uh, Evil. Uh, this is uh, available on uh, Paramount Plus. Um, you, the first season premiered on CBS back in 2019, I want to say. Um, and it's since then, um, season two and three have been, have kind of moved over to, to the app. Um, and it is starring, um, uh, Luke Cage himself, actually. It has, uh, my man, Mike Coulter in this, um, as father David Acosta and, uh, also starring, uh, Katja Herbert and, uh, Asif Manvi as uh Kristen Bouchard and Ben Shakir respectively <clears throat> and this is um so what is all right so what is evil about so evil um basically is uh about an assessor what well, is uh David Acosta who is uh in the earlier seasons he was training to become a catholic priest so in the the third season he actually becomes a priest but it's it's about him and uh Kristen, uh, Kristen Bouchard, who is like a psychologist and Ben Shakir, who is like a tech guy. He's just kind of like a tech guy. And they, they, the Catholic church is using the three of them as, uh, assessors for people who have like complaints of like demonic activity or, you know, things of that nature. Cause that, that's a real thing, by the way, too. Um, pe people will, will report like, uh, it's like demonic stuff or demonic activity or, or things of that nature to the Catholic church. And they'll send out like assessors to kind of like, like go through like the, the place, the house, the building, whatever, and talk to the people and, uh, to assess if this is like a, a actual, <clears throat> like haunting or event that needs to be, that needs to be exercised or somebody needs to have an exorcist exorcism, like taken place. Like, so it's, it's pulling, it's pulling from the real world. It's a, it's a real thing. Um, and that's why I really like the show because as, as a Christian myself, um, there, there is, uh, there is vacant when it comes to like, like Christian horror. Cause I mean, you have the exorcist and stuff like that, but, um, that this is, that's the extreme. Like it's, it's always like the extreme. There's, it's never like the little subtle things that go on like day to day. Like that's, that's kind of just, nobody ever touches on that. And it's, uh, I like to coin this, this show as like theological horror, you know, cause it's, it very much has to do with like, uh, Catholicism. It's, it's taking place in and around the Catholic church. And I'm not, I'm not Catholic myself. I, I think like the Catholic church is creepy as all hell myself, but you know, as, as someone who is Christian though, I love the show because the, there's a lot, a lot of like subtle, subtle things and subtle hints. It's kind of like, if you know, you know, it kind of applies to this show. There, there is a lot of uh, things that if you if you read the Bible, if you uh, study Scripture, if you if you're in a, a Christian walk in life, there's things you will recognize in this show that nobody else is really touching. And I love it because it's I like to call this a Christian show, but it's a real Christian show. Uh, a lot of Christian media is so watered down and just bad <laughs> like there's no other way to put it like it's just so like not real like because it's, it's they, they have this very kind of like angelic air to it and it's just the people in there like are so devout 
and they pray every day, you know, and they say the right, they have the right scripture on their mind at, for just the right situation all the time. And, you know, they never curse. They, they always do the right thing, you know, and it's just not real. It's not real. It's just, it's not, it's not real. Um, and that's why uh, David Acosta, the, the one who's like the, the main like person of faith in the show, Ben and Kristen are not, <laughs> they are not in the faith. Uh, Kristen is a psychologist, so she, you know, she's in the analytical state of mind, even though I think she grew up Catholic, but there's an event that happened, which they touch on in the show, where she just kind of like disobeyed all of that. You know, she kind of like turned her back uh, on God, on faith. Um, and Ben is just a complete non-believer. He's, he's a complete skeptic and he's, he's like a tech guy and he's the one they put in like if, I, there's, if uh, I don't know, there's a knocking in the wall or something like that. He'll come in and he'll like actually like look at like the structure of the house and he'll go in and look at the wall and like look behind the wall and say, oh, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a loose wire thing here so every time the air kicks on it bangs this thing into the wall you know so yeah there you go it's not not a haunting you just got to fix this thing in the wall there you go boom right and he's he's good with computers and, and tech stuff and and things like that so he's 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 like the the main debunker of of like everything of like the physical stuff he's the main debunker of the physical stuff christian is the debunker of the the psychological stuff so like somebody is they think somebody's having like demonic possession or something and she'd go in there and she'll like go through her like psychology stuff and like just uh, oh is he possessed by demons no he's uh, it's going through a manic episode and he's you know psychological speak um and so that's just and that's one of the reasons that i think the show is very genius the other and the other reason is because it is a horror show <laughs> end of the day um and it and i i love it because it do get like very goofy horror tropes like they because they have like uh demons in the show you know and it, it they can go pretty goofy with them too as far as like um you know uh a guy in a rubber suit you know that's just like you know on set and he's he's playing the and like they show him like in full-on demon gear just like interacting with like people in the show who <laughs> it's just it's it's fun it's goofy I love it. Um, like as a horror fan, like it's it's very tongue in cheek. Uh, but also they do also kind of have like just very subtle things as well. Uh, like they have like recurring demons in this too. So one of my f uh, favorite ones in here is a uh, George, old George here again. <laughs> you know he like intro the show and everything. George was like they're night terrorists, right? So uh, Christian at one point was having these recurring night terrors with George, uh, you know, visiting her like nightly, right? And and again, it's, it's, a, it's a TV show well, it's a guy in a full like rubber suit, you know, like playing this, this character on TV. They show in the show, they show that um, she was, I think her daughters were like watching a, a horror movie or something like that. And it showed like, like and the, the creature in there was like the, the, the demon that was visiting her at night that they kind of pull it together in a way where they're saying like oh well she saw this in a in a movie one time and it kind of rested in her like subconscious and, and she's going through like a very stressful time and so like that's kind of like activating this this thing where in her dream her her subconscious is bringing up this 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 thing to visit her you know it's in a in a way to i don't know kind of cope or just because she's going through this this like rough time and it's like okay that's that's actually pretty good that I, I i i like that they do that and it kind of can explain away like in a in a real sense of like these experiences that people have is not overtly demonic but even in that sense it is demonic because something is visiting you in your dreams at night <laughs> right and you can explain away oh it was just like you know this thing i saw on tv but something is visiting you every night <laughs> I kind of said something about like it's it's kind of like if you know you know kind of aspect to the show too for for like the the Christians that will actually like watch this and uh, like they they have stuff in here that um I, I don't know I don't think you have to be like just exclusively Christian to get it it is kind of like in plain sight if you are like <clears throat> in the Christian walk it's it, they have they have stuff in here that like you will specifically 
like notice, see and notice and attune to. So like uh uh David Acosta, Father David Acosta now, but um he he's he has he's like blessed with the visions. Pretty much like what they explain in the Bible. Him him and Kristen are like very close like very close <laughs> in in this show they and christian is going through she's going through it she she is she she's done a lot of bad stuff <laughs> in this show let's let's put it that way and that brings me to this guy leland townsend now, i'm not sure if he's just an agent of the devil or if he is beelzebub beelzebub himself beelzebub who was that guy but he, yeah, Leland is like the force of chaos and evil in this show. And um, he, the guy, um, he's played by a guy, uh, Michael Emerson, who is, uh, yeah, Michael Emerson, who plays him too well. <laughs> he's playing Leland Townsend too well. God, what do I say about Leland? <laughs> he, he is uh, kind of the heel of this story um he he's a he is an all the way agent for the devil and he is and the thing how they use leland is like they're showing you because he is all in the church he is like all up in the church y'all i'm t t <laughs> that's, you just see him just all up in the church he's in like he's like on the accessory board i think you is, that's how you call it He's like on a first name basis with the Monsignor. He's been plaguing uh, both uh, David Acosta and Kristen and Ben since they started. Like he's been, he's in contact with Kristen's kids. <laughs> like, and is he's going to trying to show you like, yeah, no, he, the enemy is all up in the church. And the other thing about it is um, like, again, Kristen and Ben, have nothing to, they, they're not religious at all they really don't have anything to do with the church but as soon as they started working like with the church leland was all over it's almost like the closer you again it's again it's another thing like if you know you know <laughs> kind of thing right like because the, like the closer you you get to god it's like the eye of sauron just focuses right on you <laughs> <laughs> like he can't like you know the the devil can't have you getting closer to god like he is going to focus on you you know what i mean and so yeah and that's leland he got close to Kristen's mom he didn't turn her he's getting close to her kids you know what i mean he's been plaguing ben he's he's been plaguing uh uh david acosta you know cause again he's up in the church every day he's in the church you know what i mean the other my other my favorite character one of my favorite characters in this um is uh sister andrea that's is a good old sister andrea oh um, she looks she looks i think she looks so sweet and so meek in there but she is a force <laughs> and she is she is most definitely a force in this and i love how she she plays sister andrea too um she is so she she again she's gifted she's she can like actually see demons in the show right and um she like sees them she interacts with them she even like cast them out in her own way which is like beating the hell out of them <laughs> basically in the um in the season three of finale she actually takes a shovel to many a demon in that show and just beating the crap out of the damn thing I, just, I love it. it's like one of my favorite moments in the show uh, like I, I need a sister andrea in my house to just please please sister just beat all the demons out of my house please it's, it's just we just pack with them yeah, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on about this show. This is the third season. Um, they they already kind of setting up for season four. And um, I can't wait. It's my favorite show going right now. Um, so, yeah, out of five, man, this is a five. This is a straight five for me. Yeah, I love it. This is, um, and I love this for, like, Christian media. Because Christian media is just, there's some good stuff out there. There is, but man, I, I, don't, I don't, I can't get it because it's not real. You know, it's not real. Like, we need more Christian media that is like real, man, like real people, real events, real, you know, real things. I like, 
you know, because, um, yeah, we go through like Christian's life and we go through Ben's life and, you know, they, they, they aren't perfect. They aren't saying the right things that they, they don't, they didn't not coming at life through like a, uh, like a Christian mindset or a godly mindset, you know, so they make mistakes, they, they screw up, um, and they have a really, a really, really great scene, um, where, uh, you know, Christian kind of comes forward to David, you know, and, um, yeah, they, they, man, it's, it's, it's really great, um, and, oh, and between Christian and David, and I love this because my man David, he's a, he's a real guy, he's a real human being, he, he has real needs, real wants, you know what I'm saying, he's, he has this real attraction going, uh, for, for Christian, and, yeah, he has to, man, he has to pray on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel you, brother. I feel you. You know, yeah, see, <laughs> slamming down the brewski, you know, after a long day of saving souls, you know. But, um, yeah, this is a, this is a great show. It's a good show. It's, um, like, it's horror, but uh, more um, with, like, a Christian, like, Christian overtone to it. It's dealing with faith is dealing with um like christ is dealing with it's, it's taking part in the in the catholic church one of the greatest shows of all time for me in my opinion my humble opinion and yeah check it out paramount plus season three five out of five yes so um and that brings me to the end of this man this was this was this was fun this was cool i liked it um again this is going to be like a weekly thing I am hoping, hopefully, hopefully you uh, stay with me. Uh, you know, you got to the end. And uh, I am, again, my name is Alex Mack. Um, yeah, catch me. We, uh, this is a part, if you're listening, or if you want to find out how to catch me, uh, this podcast is on, it's on everything at this point. It's on, um, it's on Apple, it's on Google, uh, it's on Audible, um, it's on Spotify, Amazon Music. It's everywhere. Just look up uh, Maniacal Books Podcast. And, uh, my name is Alex Mack. Um, yeah. I will see you next time. I guess. I hate that. I hate the weird reflection. Okay, I'm gone. I'm being dumb now. <laughs>